Father Ryan already introduced uh, Jim Riley better than I can. Uh, let's just simply say that Jim's held a lot of jobs. And uh, the, currently, he is uh, president and CEO of the Metropolitan Per Exposition Authority, the nation's largest convention center, and Navy Pill, Illinois, the top visit, visited tourist and leisure destination. Uh, the MPEA generates $8 billion of economic activity and support 65,000 jobs. Like anybody in this room didn't know all that. Thank you, Father. My pleasure to, to introduce the one and only, the pride and joy of not only Jacksonville, Illinois, but Beardstown, Jim Riley. And he has traversed that bridge many times. I'm done. <laughs> After that, there's nothing more to be said. I appreciate, appreciate all the nice comments. Uh, I would first like to acknowledge four of my nine bosses, four of the members of the MPEA uh, board, which is always an important thing to do. Jack Greenberg, the chairman of the board, uh, Terry McGann, Ron Powell, and Bob Ryder, who are members of the board. Please, please stand. <laughs> When I last spoke to the City Club in late 2012, I was touting the potential of a fairly dramatic change in governance, a public-private public partnership uh, that alongside with the changes in McCormick Place cost structure and labor reforms had the potential to change the way the MPA does business. And it might, I suggested, also be something of a model for other governmental units to consider. In the space of roughly eight months in 2010-2011, we transformed the authority from a large, sometimes cumbersome operating entity into a slimmed down asset management operation with only 26 employees in the corporate office, down for more than 200. We did this by har harnessing the operational expertise and the power of the private sector. We brought in the top private sector operator of trade shows and McCormick uh, trade shows and um, uh, uh, convention centers, uh, SMG, to manage McCormick Place, and we leased Navy Pier to Navy Pier, Inc. At that time, at the time when I was speaking before, this was purely an experiment. Nobody knew whether it was going to work, and there were many doubters. For one thing, whoever heard of a governmental entity giving up something? Especially something as big and valuable as Navy Pier, governments tend to glom on to things that give them more power, more employees, more money, not give them up. Turning hundreds of government jobs at McCormick Place over to the private sector? Whoever heard of such a thing? This is Chicago, after all. More importantly, the critics wondered if it would work, if it would produce the supposed benefits of greater efficiency, higher revenue, and lower cost. Happily, I can report to you today that so far, almost three years into it, since we began the experiment, it is working. And not only is it working, but it's exceeding the expectations of those who had the foresight and the courage to move forward with the changes, including the interim board, MPA board, chaired by, chaired by Dave Messina. During the three years, almost three years, that SMG has been in charge, uh, they've grown overall revenue by 12.8 million or 10 percent compared with budget. They've reduced the operating deficit by 10.5 million or 9 percent as compared with, with budget. Of course, while that, <clears throat> while that reduces the deficit, I should, rem truth in, in uh, speaking, uh, McCormick Place still operates at a deficit, as does every other trade show center in the country. Uh, but it has, we have reduced the deficit. We also established, MPA also established uh, benchmarks for SMG to meet in terms of customer service satisfaction as, as independently verified by, uh, by um, a company that we have do the, do the surveys of customers. 
So in FY12, they exceeded the benchmark by 7%. In FY13, they exceeded the benchmark by 11%. And in fiscal year 14, which ends the end of June, they're projected to exceed the benchmark by 15%. All this under the leadership of David Costin, the SMG general manager. David, please stand up. As a further sign of progress, during that time, SMG McCormick Place, in partnership with Choose Chicago, which handles our, our marketing, uh, has booked at least 50 new pieces of business every year including 20, at least 20 really significant pieces of business during that time. And they rebooked the legacy events, all the legacy events that were making headlines in 2010, threatening to leave. Uh, Don Welsh is the leader of the band, but I think Don is where he should be, which is out on the road selling. But I want to recognize um, Bob Brad Kent, the vice president of, of sales for uh, Chew Chicago, and Adrian Tiratelli, uh, the um, assistant general manager uh, in charge of the uh, sales on the McCormick side. Would you guys please stand? <laughs> Navy Pier, under the leadership of my colleague Marilyn Gardner, president and CEO of Navy Pier Inc., has also made great strides. They're operationally self-sufficient. They've developed a vision for the Pierce 2016 Centennial based on a study by the Urban Land Institute. They selected a great design team, James Corner Field Operations, and construction is, phase one construction is in progress. Massive changes. Marilyn, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> With all of that under, the, under our belt, and with the support of Mayor Emanuel and Governor Quinn, we're now involved in a series of construction and economic development projects totaling $1 billion. These projects will truly elevate Chicago. The pier has already begun the transformation process, both in terms of construction and in the kind of programming it offers to expand and build on its traditional family-oriented attractions and events while reaching out to a new demographic, young adults. Meanwhile, MBEA will, MPEA will break ground in early next year on a series of projects that will greatly enhance Chicago's position in the global convention and trade show industry with all that means to Chicago and the Chicago economy. And that's where I'd like to focus the remainder of my remarks today, the revitalization not only of the trade show industry, but also the entire near south side. These series of projects will create a lively entertainment district that will complement the large and growing neighborhood immediately around McCormick Place, spark the long-awaited redevelopment of the landmark motor row area, and provide more attractions, yet more attractions for tourists and locals alike. Big urban development projects sometimes seem to benefit the agency or the developer building the project while the surrounding community takes a back seat. But in this case, we have the happy circumstance where the benefits are shared. Let's start with the one big gap that we're filling with the McCormick Place Entertainment District project. It's hard to coordinate all these things. <laughs> uh, as you can see, McCormick Place is dead last among the major convention centers in the country in terms of the number of hotel rooms immediately around the center. So McCormick Place needs more hotel rooms close, uh, in close proximity to the center. The hotels, in turn, to be successful, need restaurants, entertainment, and retail around it. And by a serendipita and serendipitously, the neighborhood also needs hotels, restaurants, nightlife, and retail. A perfect hat trick of need and response, something the Blackhawks could you know, work on a little, little more in the last few days. Um, the community has been a major part of the design process from the beginning, with input into the selection of the internationally renowned Caesar Pelly's firm, Pelly Clark Pelly, as the design architect, several meetings of neighborhood advisory committees and public meetings under the leadership of Alderman Pat Dowell. 
In all of this, MPA has tried to work as a real neighbor and serve as a catalyst for neighborhood development while at the same time serving our needs as a leader in the Chicago convention and trade show industry. Before getting to the projects, I'd like to say a word about the neighborhood we are fortunate to have growing, expanding, and becoming ever more prosperous right on our, right on our doorstep. Back in 1989, when I first came to McCormick Place, God, that's a long time ago. <laughs> back, in 19, back in 1989, when I first came to McCormick, there were hardly any, there were very few people who lived in our immediate vicinity. And I must say, in night time, it was kind of daunting to walk around in the area. But frankly, it, it, but in just a little over 20 years, it's developed into a vibrant community albeit so far one without a lot of retail or a lot of entertainment. The area has grown over that 20 years to 38,000 residents with average household income of $83,000 and is projected to add another 10,000 residents in the next five years. Just last week, another 500 unit building was announced for the area. And they are a diverse and largely young group with 61% being what demographers call metro renters young, educated singles just beginning their professional life. Another 10% are classified as trendsetters on the cutting edge of urban life. They are young, diverse, and mobile. And it won't just be the immediate area that will benefit. The projects will generate 7,400 construction jobs with an economic impact during construction of a billion two hundred million and 971 net full-time equivalent jobs with an annual economic impact of over $100 million once the buildings are up and running. And these numbers do not include the impact of building these projects will have on the convention and trade show in industry in Chicago, something that is a mainstay of our economy. Those are probably the biggest numbers, and we didn't try to include those in, in this because they're harder to estimate. The project, and, and to the projects themselves, the project covers a six block area from the Green Line Station, which the CTA is building, um, down to Cermak. Uh, this is publicly owned hotel. It will probably be a privately owned, privately developed hotel um, on past, uh, on down um, Cermak, past the event center, which I'll show you in a minute, and on to the headquarters hotel, which I'll show you more in a minute, and incorporating the ABC building, which is a landmark building, and on over to the lake. This is a big project. It's nothing small here. Um, this is just sort of a block uh, pattern that shows you more about, uh, perhaps orients you more into the, into the area. Underpinning all of this will be landscape and indoor, outdoor restaurants, retail, and nightlife that will create a vibrant and pedestrian-friendly urban area. The Green Line station is already under construction, and MPA will break ground early in 2015 on the event center and the headquarters hotel, with completion anticipated in early 2017. The design by Caesar Pelly, Pelly Clark Pelly uh, is truly, I, I think, an outstanding, outstanding design that really will stand out and really fits extremely well into the neighborhood. What you see is, is just how um, open to the outside this is. That was something that was important to the neighborhood. If you're inside, you can see people around outside. If you're outside, the, the whole thing is glass around the periphery, you'll be able to, to, to see that kind of activity, and that's pretty, pretty important. Here you can see that as you're in the, in the foyer, in the lobby area, you can actually see into the seating bowl. Um, again, I think really a, a, a great design. The outside, um, again, yet in yet another design. Um, this is an inside view with, with a, a a general session, uh, a speaker from one of the, the uh, of our uh, trade shows speaking. This is a basketball. This is it's used for a basketball as a basketball um, arena. 
and as a concert venue. The design is not only a great design in my, in my judgment, but it's also a very flexible design. It's going to serve all of, the, all of the various uses that this building will be put to over the years, which are many. Um, and the roof, which is sort of the biggest design feature, uh, will be visible from the West Building, our West Building, as well as many of the, uh, many of the buildings around. And the, event, and the event center will have a restaurant, a restaurant sports bar at the corner of Cermak and, um, uh, Cermak and Indiana. The event center will provide a much needed addition to our campus to be used for general sessions for trade shows and for smaller events and also fulfill a need that Paul has for a place to bring their team back from the far out suburbs uh, to come back and play in the city and will help with the overall goal of establishing a lively area on the south side, near south side, for residents and a, a convention attendees. This is a rare circumstance where there is actually substantial private dollars involved. A lot of times people talk about private, public private partnerships, but the partnerships are a lot more on the public side than on the private side. But in this case, that's not so. MP, uh, DePaul is paying half of the estimated $140 million cost of construction and is paying at or above market rent on top of that. The MPA is paying the other half. We thank DePaul University for their involvement in the project. I don't think people understand, without this partnership between us and DePaul, they couldn't afford this building and we couldn't afford this building. It's only because we're partners that we're producing this building that would be great for the public, great for MPEA, and of course, great for DePaul. Uh, the DePaul people are here. I, would you please stand and be recognized? That we're Thank you. We really appreciate that. The hotel, <clears throat> which is designed by the distinguished architectural firm of Gensler, uh, is, is also a very elegant design, I think. The 56-story, the very slender 56-story tower uh, will be a beacon for the McCormick Place, of course, but also a beacon for the entire south side. It will be visible from the loop, it will be visible from the lake, it will be vis visible from the south and the west. Um, and its transparent podium, the base, which is transparent along with the, um, uh, along with the event center, will also will house um, a significant entertainment, restaurant, and retail space, which is, uh, which is very much needed and which will be, oh, and I always forget this part, the landmark ABC building, which some of you may know or you may, may not, but it's a very elegant landmark building that was built at the same time as the, um, as the Donnelly building uh, it will be incorporated into the hotel and will have meeting rooms on upper floors and restaurants on the, on the ground floor. This is another view of the hotel from, from the ground with, with also the, the uh, arena uh, event center. People will get mad at me if I call it anything else. The event center um, uh, in the, in the um, uh, background. Uh, and this is the ABC building, which again will have uh, restaurants and, and nightlife. Another ground floor view. We, when we first started out this project, we had intended to put the um, headquarters hotel at the, between Michigan and um, uh, Indiana along Cermak. We changed to a location that, as, you, as you've seen, is immediately across Cermak from our West Building. And therefore, it, it's actually a much better, better location for McCormick Place because it's right in the center of our campus. It's not off to the side, it's right in the center. And that's a great, um, great thing. But it also opened up the Michigan Avenue site for a privately developed smaller hotel, which will be much, much more this is Michigan Avenue. There are some of the Motor Road buildings. Um, this 
privately built hotel, which will be smaller, much smaller than the 1,200 room hotel, is much more on the scale of the landmark, the historic landmark district. So all this worked out really, uh, really well. Just to give you some sense of what we're, we're doing here, excuse me a moment. Here's what the area looks like now. Exactly at the exact same angle, but this is what the area, that part of the area will look like when we're done. This is a big project and we're very happy to be, be doing this. We think it's, hopefully you will see how off base the critics have been who've discussed this as a taxpayer funded boondoggle for DePaul. Put aside that DePaul is paying half the construction costs. Put aside that DePaul is paying at or above market rent. Put aside that MPA, McCormick Place, needs this building every bit as much as DePaul does. This is a major economic development project for the near south side and a major investment in our tourism and convention infrastructure. This is exactly the kind of project that we must use our precious capital resources if Chicago is going to continue to thrive in a very competitive regional and national economy. The day we stop making these kind of investments is the day that Chicago starts to shrink. The day we stop making these kind of investments is the time our tax base begins to shrink. The day we stop making these kind of investments is the day our ability to deal with the broader social issues, uh, whether it's pensions or schools, it, that will begin to shrink too because ultimately there has to be money to pay for those things and the money comes from economic development. So this is a project that we're proud to be part of. We think it's going to be great and it will have a major impact. We're not playing small ball here. This is a big project, a billion dollars, stretches over six blocks, does a lot of things and will generate other, other um, uh, events, uh, other kinds of construction. It's a great project, a big, a big significant civic project. So far so good with MPA, MPAs and NPIs, a large scale experiment in public-private partnership. Is everything perfect at McCormick Place? Of course not. Does every day bring a new challenge? Of course. But the experience so far suggests that there is merit in harnessing government and private sector in appropriate situations. That the sum can be greater than the parts that going forward, governments would be wise to explore these options where practicable. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have time for some questions. Uh, raise your hand. Uh, right here, Jack, right in front. Raise your hand. No, we accept all questions. No RFPs, though. All right, this is hand, hand. Graham, of course. Uh, Taft, formerly known as Shevsky and Frillick. All right, is Guthman here? All right, moving on. <laughs> Jim, great project. What does the future hold for the development of Motor Row? Well, a couple of things. One is I think part of the reason Motor Row hasn't developed, there's been a lot of interest, but I think sort of understandably, no one wanted to be first. Somebody was worried that if they invested several million dollars in a, in a project, and then, you know. Go ahead, I'm just looking for more questions. Go ahead. Okay. You're fine. Uh, 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 and, and then looked around and there was nobody there, even to him, um, <laughs> that, that they would lose their investment. So in a sense, we're going first. Uh, this, this development, I think, will help. Also, the city has plans. I talked about streetscape, but the city has talked about streetscape development along Motor Row uh, for quite a while, but now that project is actually going to go forward. So as developers come, and there are some already talking to the city and talking to others, um, I, I, that will help because it, it will show potential developers that something is actually happening. And of course, having a billion dollars built, built just down the street should help too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is that all the questions we're <laughs> going to get? I know it's only a billion dollars. I mean, uh, 
you go ahead. You, 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 Jim, you can. Can you, can you back up the slides? I wanted to uh, have a question about the interior of the arena. If okay. You go back. It's probably about eight slides back. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know when we get there. No, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, stop. Who's that guy named Paul? Is that Paul Green up on the road? <laughs> <laughs> Might be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Practicing for next year's polar, polar plunge. <laughs> okay, last question, I assume. Two more questions. We had one, we had one more, and we could have a seder. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's her father. Well, this is an unusual card, but we'll do it. Well, not even signed, but it's a good question. What is the total estimated hotel room demand uh, for a place like McCormick? What is the Total estimated hotel room demand at McCormick Place. I think we could use around 4,000, maybe maybe more. Let me explain. One-on-one -on -one with the Las Vegas Convention Center, McCormick Place competes just fine. What, what, what Las Vegas has that we don't have are these mega hotels that can meet where 3,000 people or more can meet, eat, sleep, be entertained, and never go outside. I never understand why people don't want to go outside, but put, put that aside. That's attractive to a lot of kind of businesses. Now, this doesn't give us uh, one mega hotel, but because there'll be uh, a sky bridge connecting the event center to the new hotel to the West Building, as there's already a sky bridge connecting the existing 1,260-room um, Hyatt Regency McCormick Place. Uh, those two hotels, because we own them both, uh, will work together and, and book, can book that kind of, kind of business, a business that it, it doesn't compete with other hotels in Chicago because nobody else can do that, that number. Um, so I, I really think uh, it, almost any number, but certainly more than, we'll have about 3,000 if you include the the um, uh, smaller hotel that we hope will be privately developed. I think we can, we can um, easily go beyond that. I, just an anecdote, but we just opened uh, the end of May the second tower of the Hyatt Regency McCormick Place. We went from 800 rooms to 1,264 rooms. In June, our percentage occupancy was greater than it was a year before. In other words, not only, not only did we lease out or rent out the, the new tower, but we actually increased the total percentage occupancy. So for shows that want to be at McCormick Place, yeah, a lot of them want to be at the downtown hotels, and that, that's good. Uh, but there's a really a nearly insatiable demand, I think. At some point, there's some limit, of course. But uh, there's, there's really a huge demand to be right at the center, particularly if we're successful, as we think we will be, in creating an entertainment district to go along with it. There's no reason why the near south side can't, over time, um, become a little more like uh, you know, the near north side, the Well Street or, or whatever, those areas that, that have long had that kind of entertainment. The people who live in this area now, and as I said, they're fairly um, uh, you know, they're middle income people, uh, to a large extent, to the extent they want to go um, out for, you know, some kind of music or, or a high -end, higher end restaurant, they have to get in a car or a cab and go up to the north side. There's no reason why that can't work here. And, and that's my point. There's a real synergy between what the neighborhood needs and can support and what McCormick Place needs and can support. Okay, Jim, we have one more question. Uh, Ed Cooper, where are you? Okay, there seems to be a penmanship is a very important quality in, in the city club. Uh, do you have an opinion whether the, is that the spire? What's the word? The spire. The spire. Boy, that that McCormick place is really expanding. Right, this is this isn't at McCormick, but uh, okay, I know that. I just thought it will go forward. You, can you answer that question? No. Good. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea. I mean, the, the developer said he suddenly found the money, uh, but the bank said, well, pay us first. So I, you know, I, I don't know is the answer. Well, listen, how about a big round of applause?
despite that smoke, Jim.